Welcome to this Corgi video tutorial covering resolution, resolution handling and as a result of this also handling of the coordinate system. Resolution handling is super easy in Corgi because the engine does almost all the work. So let's start with an example. Here you can see you can initialize Corgi with a width and a height. I chose 1280 and 720. Let's fill the available space with a rectangle. I will actually choose a rectangle which is much too large for the window to see how Corge will handle clipping. So this looks like this now. And for demonstration purposes we will now add a text field which will show the current coordinates of the mouse cursor. So let's place the text field first. This should now show us the current coordinates of the mouse cursor. And yes, it does. From 0.0, .0 to 1,020 to 720. So the reason I did this division by two is because I'm using a retina display and uh, the scaling will actually double the pixel coordinate values and to get the real values corresponding to our set width and height I have to do this division by two. The problem with using a fixed width and height are that most of the times you don't have influence on these values. Imagine running your game in full screen or in the browser where the values of width and height are determined by the resolution of the display or the set resolution in the operating system respectively from the size that the JavaScript window gets inside the browser. To get around this, Corge defines a virtual width and a virtual height parameter and they define your in-game dimension. Actually, virtual width and virtual height are parameters of the initialization call of Corge. And when you don't specify them, like I did here, then they're just set to uh, the same as the width and the height. So we can, of course, change them. And you always should do this. Let's do 640 by 3. 20 and now the native width and height this actually differs from the virtual width and the virtual height but remember these two virtual width and virtual height are the in-game dimension these are the ones where we refer our origin to when we place like fuse to demonstrate this i will add another text field mouse native coordinates but Mouse local chords. Now let's have a look and as you will be able to see, well, you can't see anything. Oh. The problem is that these coordinates I initially chose for the text fields referred to an origin from 0, 0 with a virtual width and virtual height which were the same as these 720p dimensions. But now the in-game dimensions are much smaller and this means that these coordinates will actually place the text fields out of the visible area. To fix this, we have to decrease these values, which is 200, 100 and 200 actually, for being able to understand it better, we let's just add native coordinates and this called local coordinates. And if we have a look at it now, then we can see that these native coordinates, they did not change at all. We goes from 0, 0 to 1280 to 720. But two interesting things happen which the Corgi engine handles for us. The first thing is that these in-game coordinates from the virtual width and virtual height are spanning from 0 to 640 and from 0 to 320. And the engine automatically handles these scaling from the 
local to the native coordinates and vice versa. So you can see the origin of the local coordinates is here, it's 0, 0. And the maximum width and height are down below here at 640 and 320. The other thing is that we chose an aspect ratio of 2 to 1 with virtual width versus virtual height and the window width and height are 16 by 9. So the engine had to introduce these bars here to actually maintain the aspect ratio automatically and this will be maintained even if we resize the window. As you can see, the coordinates of the in-game window, the in-game coordinates, never change. So you have a fixed coordinate system and the fuse you placed will always be at the correct location. The native coordinates, of course, change. This window is not 1080 pixels wide anymore. It's smaller, but the engine automatically handles this calculation. So if you would place a new few, for example, at zero, zero, let's do this. Let's get a circle. Actually, the circle would automatically be at zero, zero if I won't specify it. But for the sake of this video, let's just say it's at zero, zero. the circle will be here. It's not at the native 0, 0, but it's at the local 0, 0, and it always will be here. So what happens if we try to move this circle to a negative y coordinate? We can do this. Let's just say it's at minus 50. So, and the circle somehow vanished, but actually it's still there, but it's placed under these borders. It's cut off, it's clipped away. We can actually disable this clipping of the borders. We have to specify another parameter, clip borders false. Now we should be able to see this circle. There it is. It's still there, it's only clipped away and actually now we can see that our rectangle the violet one that we introduced with a width of and a height which is much too big even for the uh, total size of the window it was also clipped away at the bottom so let's get rid of clip borders again The black bars are always there to maintain the aspect ratio and if we try to create an aspect ratio which is actually smaller than one, we don't have these bars on the top and the bottom, but we have it on the left and the right. And if you wonder why our text disappeared, it's again because we placed these text fields at the location which is now outside of the view. can just activate the clip borders again. Deactivate them, I mean. Now you can see this text is still here, but it was just cut off at this, at this right side of the local window. I will link a document in the description down below where you can read everything I said in the Corgi documentation. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Corgi video tutorials.